Okay. So this is the second half of section eight, and this is about finding angle measurements. So the first part of this will definitely be review. There, there is a step box. The step box, I'm going to guide you through as well. So if you want to write it in your step box, you can, or you can write it somewhere else. The title is Finding Angles with Trig Ratio. It's still like applications of the unit circle. Like if you look in your text, not what it would say, but this is like the finding angles piece of it. So do you guys remember these, like the, the trig functions of those little negative ones? Do you remember what those are called? Yeah, inverse trig functions. So just like when you are learning how to solve equations when you are in like eighth or ninth grade and you have to get x by itself and so you know the inverse of adding is subtracting and you do all of that, the inverse of your trig functions are the trig function with a negative one that denotes that it's the inverse just like when we had it in chapter two and we talked about that notation as well. So if you know that the sine of an angle is one half, you can use the inverse sign on your calculator to tell you what that angle is. One of the really important things is making sure your calculator is in the appropriate units for your angle. Because remember, our angles could be degrees or angles could be radians, right? So you have to sort of look at the problem to see what the problem wants. And we'll talk about that when we get to the example. And we'll talk about it a little bit up next. But so keep that in mind that that's under mode on your calculator, usually, depending on the calculator. So you can switch it from radians to degrees and back and forth. Okay. Another thing we need to talk a little bit about are the connections between the different trig functions. And so this is off your unit circle. I've been really bad at drawing circles today, so I think I'm going to try and slow it down. So if I just talk about cosine for a second here, right here, let's say that's cosine of 30 degrees. What is the cosine of 30 degrees? Look at your unit circle. Like, literally just look at it and tell me what the cosine of 30 degrees is. Okay, square root of 3 over 2. Where else? On this unit circle, is the cosine equal to square root of 3 over 2? Not negative, but exactly equal to square root of 3 over 2. Where else on this unit circle? 330. 330, okay. So 330 degrees. How big is this piece right here from my origin, or not my origin, from my x axis? down. How big is that? 30 degrees. Do you guys notice the connection there? Okay, I'm, ho I'm hoping you will see that that's both 30 degrees from that x-axis. So cosine is the same in like quadrant one or four because it's positive, or it will be the same in quadrants uh, two or three. But one of the connections is, is that the cosine, oh, I'm going to do this in red, but so try and color code this. The cosine of your angle is the same as the cosine of that angle, but 360 minus it. Because a full circle is 360, right? So the cosine of 30 is the same as the cosine of 330, which is 360 minus 30. You're supposed to kind of find this out in HD, but it's okay if you didn't. That's why I'm going over it now. Any questions about that so far? So that's where our cosines will be the exact same. So we can do the same thing with sine. My circle drawing is still pretty off. So let's let's stick with let's do the sine of 30 degrees also. So that's 30 degrees. The sine of 30 degrees is what? Looking straight at your unit circle. What was that? One half. Where else is the sine exactly 
one half. Not negative one half, but exactly one half. All right, 150. What quadrant is that in? Quadrant two. So over here, that's like 150 degrees. Do you notice that this is 30 degrees as well? So sine is a little bit different. Instead of being a full circle minus that degree, it's just half a circle minus the degree. So how many degrees are in half a circle? 180. So the sine of the angle is the same as the sine of 180 minus the angle. Okay. Tangent is a little bit different because tangent's a little bit harder to see, but we can still talk about it. And instead, I'm going to do the tangent of the 45 degree angle. So 45 degrees. Now, tangent, we have to divide them, right? So if I look at 45, I've got square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2. What's that going to equal? 1, right? So that's just 1. It's a little bit trickier. It's not as easy to just look at points. you got to divide. Where else is the tangent equal to 1? Two twenty-five over here because so this would be 225 degrees because that one is they're both negative if you look at that they're both negative so it's still end up equaling positive one so what happens here is this is a little 45 so it's not subtraction subtracting the tangent of your angle is equal to the tangent of 180 plus the angle so that's how we can find some other angle measures for different part, like different um, in different quadrants. Okay, I'm gonna write that down again without pictures. So we're gonna write this all again in your stat box just to kind of help with that. Now, all of these I did degrees because we probably spend more time in our lives working with degrees. <laughs> So if you have a problem that talks, like has your angles in degrees, use degrees. But you might also see radians. So we're going to talk about radians as well. And we'll write that down in the stat box also. Okay. Does so everyone got this? So here is our example. It says find two angles on the unit circle with the angle being between 0 and 2 pi. Remember, theta is standing for angle, such that the cosine of our angle is 0 0.7816. So we're going to kind of dissect this, all the different parts, and then find our two answers. So we've got two angles. And that's what we were just talking about, so we'll have to think about what about cosine we have to do. This other really important part here is that the angle is from 0 to 2 pi. When I see 2 pi, that means radians. Take a look at your unit circle. How many radians is half of a circle? So we know half of a circle is 180 degrees. How many radians is that based on what it says here? Pi. pi. So 2 pi is a full circle. I know it doesn't say that because it has 0. But it doesn't say 360 either, right? So what this is saying is that on one full circle, from 0 to 2 pi is one full circle, you've got to find the two angles whose cosine equals that. 
So first we'll start with the fact that I'm just rewriting a problem. The cosine of theta equals 0 0.7816. Now, just like I was talking about before, we know like the opposite of adding is subtracting. You know, to get rid of a square, we have to square root. Well, to figure out what theta is, I have to do the inverse cosine. So theta is going to equal the inverse cosine of 0 0.71, or sorry, 7816. Now, before you go ahead and pop this on your calculators, go to load and make sure you change it to radians. So make sure that you check the mode on your calculator and put it into radian. If you're not sure what that looks like on your calculator, let me know. So make sure you put it into radian first. So If you don't know how to do it on your calculator, let me know, because I forgot the, I don't know what the name of these are, but these, these guys, it's a little bit different. If you have one like this, it's a little bit different than what I was saying. So then, you just really just plug that in, so I end up with theta equals 0 0.6, oh, I keep skipping numbers here. 6735, so I'm going to round that, right? So theta equals 0 0.674. So that's one answer. So 
especially, again, it's helpful to use your unit circle, but you can take a look at this as well. I don't want to erase this if people are still writing. The next slide is just the assignment, so we can get to that. We got some time. So this is the 80.2 half of the assignment for your angles.
Thank you. 
up to gold. Yep. 